Lammersville Unified School District is a really a story of a community and a school board and a visionary leader, Dale Hansen, coming together around the idea of building a high school in an elementary school district. And an epic battle was fought, uh, partnering with developers, community, community service district and the like. But in the end, during the midst of one of the greatest financial crises in the United States history, funding for this great high school was found. We're trying new things every day. Like you'll hear me with the kids, uh, and we'll, we'll be, I'll, I'll say, "Hey, we're going to try out a new, we're going to try out a new website today." And you know, just bear with me. You know, and, and the kids in the school are really receptive to that. It's been a lot of fun, you know, trying to learn as a, even as a teacher. When we developed the curriculum for the school and the program for the school, we again decided to take a, a very different approach. And part of that approach was to make sure that we had programs for not just college readiness, but for career readiness as well. And so we developed a, a professional pathways program that's a very open program where students can decide what kinds of uh, things that they're interested in now and start taking some classes that help them move towards those pathways. My favorite part about going to the school is probably the opportunities I get over here. Like if I went to my old high school that I went to, I wouldn't be able to use Chromebooks for all my classes and I wouldn't be able to get ASB president as a sophomore and this just really opened some doors for me. We're asking kids to solve problems now, right? We're asking them to, to model situations, right? And, and we're not asking them to get into the rigor of math quite so. I suppose if a student really wants to get into the rigor of math, they can be a math major when they get to college. <laughs> but, uh, but I think forcing every student to be a, a, a college level math major, which we've done in the high school math for a long time, is just not the right approach. Mountain House High School is a unique school, especially with it being indoors. It's an easier way to identify the new kids and with a friendly community, everybody's friendly and we just don't want kids to be left out. Mountain House itself um, and Lammers, the Lammersville area is very family focused and we wanted to make sure that students felt connected and their parents felt connected to the school itself. This school is, is somewhat of the centerpiece of our community. It's the place where people come to be entertained on the weekends with football games and basketball games and volleyball games. It's a place where people can gather and really feel connected to their community. And, and as such, we started our outreach to students the year before school started. Well, we ultimately want the kids to be well-rounded. We want them to have fun. We want them to join clubs. We want them to participate in athletics. We want them to have the traditional All-American uh, educational experience for the social-emotional stuff. But in the end, they're competing in a global information economy. And in that, they have to be prepared not only to compete here in California, but across the nation and the world. So we want to do both. We want to give them that small town, wonderful experience that's enriching and, and, and developing, but also when they decide what they want to be and who they want to be, they're ready to compete. We're basically just a school that has a completely different learning style where we have Chromebooks instead of textbooks, and everything is just online. They're doing this in all their classes. You know, in my previous school, I was the only one that was doing it like this, and so it was, it was very difficult for me to, you know, for kids to turn on and off. Like, you know, when you're in my classroom, this is how things operate. When you're in the other classrooms, you know, things operate a little differently. It's not a digital environment, you know, like, you know, so, so being in a school where every teacher is our, you know, where the kids all have a Chromebook, and the expectation is that there are no papers anywhere, right? The, the expectation is there's no copies being made, you know, uh, millions of copies being run off at, on a daily basis. So a typical lesson in, a, in, in one of our classrooms would, would be, you know, we kind of call it the modular approach where, where the, um, the, the lesson incorporates everything that the teacher feels is important. So it might be, um, it might be a video that the teacher has made. Uh, it might be a, um, a Khan Academy video that, you know, that's already well done, you know, that, that they like. It might be a video from another teacher uh, from a previous you know, classroom. You know, there, there are a variety of different resources that we come across. Uh, it might be a website that's interactive uh, where the kids get to move some things around on the screen and they, can, and they, and they learn by, by almost like a laboratory experience where they, where they try something, they look at what they've done and they reflect back on, on the kind of thing. So once again, they're engaged in what, what it is. Even, even if it is as simple as engaging themselves in watching a video, we want to make sure that anytime we do give them an experience like that it's something that they have some feedback all the time so we can measure where they're at and they can measure more, most important they can measure for themselves 
where they're at at any point in the class. I think traditionally a lot of times public schools have put themselves forward as this environment where this is your public school, take it or leave it. And the environment we're creating here really is a responsive environment that listens to our community, that reaches out on social media, and that makes sure that people understand what's going on at the, at the school site and gives them some power to give input over what happens as we move forward. What we're doing here is trying to provide an environment where the kids and the teacher are always in interaction with each other, right? And, and that any, any, time, any dissemination of information can be done in a, in a way where the student is actually engaged in the dissemination because, because they actively have to participate in it. They have to watch the video. They have to answer follow-up questions that go with the video. And they don't, they don't get an, uh, an opportunity to sit in the back of the class and be quiet and just kind of pretend like they're learning. You know, I, I've, always, I've always mentioned that uh, you know, as soon as you start lecturing to a, to a classroom, you've automatically given students uh, uh, an excuse to not pay attention. You know, whether they think whether they're staring at you or nodding their head or you know, those things, it doesn't mean that they're really paying attention. You know, but when a student op has to physically open up a Chromebook, they have to physically push a button, they have to physically open up a video, right? They have to physically write down some notes that, that go with their video. They have to physically answer questions that go along with it. You know, they're they're being engaged in what you're asking them to do. We want to make it to the point where we're almost a family, to the point where we can make our events better and we can get students to have more spirit, to become more involved in things, to actually want to join, and we want other students out of Mountain House to be all like, wow, Mountain House is such a great school. We are a proud community, and we're proud because of the environment that we're building and that we're working together to build this public school into something great.